I had a like the most perfect like little thing happen like this past weekend. I was hanging out with some friends and a couple of girls at a bar, and it got it was getting late, and I was like, all right, I'm, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna head home. And so I was heading home, uh, walking back to my place, and this I passed this homeless guy. And he was like, sir, sir, I ain't asking you for money. I just want some food, man. I'm so hungry. I'm so hungry. And I was like, you know what? Let's get some food, man. And so I started walking with this homeless guy. We were chatting. And I took him to a corner place and just like told him, get whatever you want. And you want a couple sandwiches or chips or, uh, you know, a hot meal, whatever. And so I just let him pick it out. They started making it. I bought it for him. Uh, and as I was leaving with him, and he was like being all thankful, like thanking me, being super nice, like kind of following me back towards where I was going, like I was being very polite. Uh, we passed some of the girls that I was hanging out with earlier that night just by random chance and it made me look the best samaritan ever because no. here i am with food that i bought for this homeless guy after i was like god i'm getting tired i gotta go home and go to bed just like 20 minutes before and they're like oh my god did you did you buy that guy like some food or so, something? Wait, i never did that, do that. Happen, I was, or can we that, tie this back to the previous conversation where they're not really thinking about you <laughs> no this happened this actually the, the, happened the and second part thinking, though they did notice okay okay they did notice because right. like they were like I, I was walking by with the and it worked even better because I didn't notice them standing on the on the the sidewalk. I got like two feet past them with Mr. Uh, Black, now hunger satiated homeless guy, and Rufus. they go, yeah, Rufus, uh, DJ, uh, is was his name, oh. and uh, and they're like Taylor, is that, are you? And then then we had a little talk again, and there you go. Like I'm gonna start doing nice things so much more on the off chance that it gets me laid. <laughs> like it's just uh, fake nice things to do, like have someone cosplay as a homeless man. I'm gonna him. hire or, DJ. My well, maybe you hire in. DJ. Here's what DJ can do for you. You hire DJ to come in and accost some woman, like like get all crazy mm. in her face, like give me a dollar, give me a dollar. And You're you gonna die tonight. tonight. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you and then you swoop in, like hey, get out of here, you. You leave her alone, or I'll kick your Is this ass. Marty McFly in this scenario. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. You. Like you and Rufus could have a real nice thing going on. Rufus gets all the hot sandwiches he wants, and you get all the hot pussy you want. You just he like like he probably lives down there on the street under your window somewhere. You could just be like up in your window, like Rufus, the blonde, the blonde. And while he's accosting her, you're running down the stairs to go like save the day, dude. I, oh you know, man, I, I I could hire a whole mini cabal. No. Of the homeless, and well, because I don't want to use the same intimidating guy looking. Uh, his name's not Ken Rufus. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's a DJ. It's a DJ. Rufus. And okay, well, Rufus is Thank like you. six three, uh, and he. To be fair to Rufus, he was definitely a heavy enough guy that this probably wasn't the first sandwich he'd had that day. Oh, this but, is perfect. A big, a guy who even bigger than you, and you come in like, hey. You leave her alone. Get out of here, you. I'll kick your ass. <laughs> and, dude, you and Rufus could have the greatest symbiotic relationship of all time. Like, like he just gets... I, I would make this happen. I'd be like, yo, Rufus, would you accost pretty white women for me? And uh, I'll come in and run you off, and uh, you know I'll give you twenty bucks a day. How about I'm it? doing it without you? May as well. <laughs> <laughs> I've been accosting pretty white women for years now. Ain't never got a sandwich out of it. <laughs> you just go all the, over the top with your sandwich and your shucking and jive, you know, hand motions. Oh, that's funny. You guys do some sort of like. You know, it'd be some kind of weird handshake that that like white people aren't good at. There'd be some some wiggly fingers and some waves and and a, and like two slaps, you know, like like that thing. Two and, and slaps. Then, it'd be like pop pop, and then there'd be a finger snap at the end. Like Rufus, we can't do this twenty-eight second handshake after every accosting. There are people are catching on. <laughs> We're working together. You know, bada bing boom. Bop, I fucking bop. love this yeah. idea. Yeah. I, I bet if you ran this by Rufus, like like all right, Rufus, don't do anything illegal, but you know, accost them a little bit, like angrily ask them for a dollar. And and then I'm gonna swoop in. I'm gonna run you off, and uh, and and you know meet me by the door later. I'll, I'll slip you. There's gonna a be a there's gonna be a hot Qdoba burrito right behind that tree, 20 <laughs> yards there. So when I come over there, I go get out of here, Rufus. Stop bothering this sexy lady with her big pouty lips. And then you run over there and you grab your hot burrito and you you go you know until next time. Yeah. Okay. okay this is happening. I need to Dude. find Rufus.
I love this idea. You get so much ass like this. They like, call like, him Rufus, and then he's going to beat my ass. <laughs> no, for, dude. He'll, you can call him Mr. Bojangles. He's I getting mean, like a dope joking. burrito. He's a, he's a very, very sweet homeless guy from our one encounter together. Yeah, they're all sweet until you start giving them Kidoba. Then they'll do whatever you want. Yeah. Yeah, he this probably, is probably you could be like Rufus, just beat her to death if she doesn't you know, you know and the ones who don't like respond to your you know, your if, if you come and save the day and they're like, Thanks and just walk away, you'd be like, Get her, Rufus. <laughs> like like she wasn't convinced <laughs> enough. Like get Rufus <laughs> to go over there and start whipping her ass a little bit and then you come in, then maybe she's a little more grateful. Like you you, you escalate. You escalate yeah. things. Maybe he injures her just a little, just like a, just that much, just enough to need to have to come back to my place for yep. a little bit of uh, very poorly administered medical care. Uh-huh, like I'll just uh-huh. put a little bit of neosporin on whatever it is, and there then you go. And just start making your move. You know? I like it. Like hope like, you don't like, have any other infections. Yeah. Like like you maybe you know you buy him some steel toe boots with the implication that he kicks women in the knee with them. Okay. She's all okay. limpy. Well, you need to help her along. I don't want to take him to the hospital though. How about just uh, not him? You're gonna no, take no, her because to your place, and then and then and then you goes, nurse her back to help. No, no, you take me to the hospital. My leg's broken. That homeless guy kicked me. And you know you yeah, can you can you can be this, like ah, yeah. then she's dependent upon you, right? Right. Ooh. I'm I'm nurturing that dependence because she knows exactly. if she goes back outside, Rufus is there with half a burrito in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> Step one: <laughs> demonstrate <laughs> value, right? Yeah. If she tries to leave. <laughs> You like look out the window, give Rufus the old wink, and then he starts like screaming and like yelling up at the window. And she's like, "Oh, maybe I'll stay here for a while." Yeah, yeah, I'll walk you home in a couple hours, but I've gotta, I gotta work on my uh, my medical thesis. Uh, so let me let me get back in here. By the way, let me bandage that up for you. You know, you pretend like you're a medical student in this in this in this terrible scenario. That would be even better. See, that's how you get her back upstairs. Oh, I'm a medical student. I've I've got my bag upstairs. I could take a look at that knee for you that Rufus kicked with those. Did those look like new steel toe boots to you? Yeah, he must have stolen them off somebody. Big violent yeah. guy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I've seen him in the neighborhood. That's Rufus the 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 kneecapper. They call him. Rufus the kneecapper. Yeah, yeah. He's uh he's crazy. They won't Great do anything. Guy. I mean, uh, a horrible guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he loves Kidoba. Yeah. <laughs> loves it. That's how I get my way through. Burrito bowls. That's uh, that's What that's, what other uh, fun things could I do with the local homeless? Because there are a plenty. Huh. What what else could be done? I would like to start like a homeless um, um, like doo wop group, like uh, <laughs> get them all like doing that thing where they for the longest time, 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 <laughs> looking in her eye, ooh, and then and then Rufus jumps in, ooh, and when <laughs> I find you, I will be right behind you, I, and then they all sing as a as a chorus. I haven't been there for the longest time. And then they're just down by the wind. You could you could serenade Whoa, ladies with your like, the longest for the longest time. <laughs> yeah, Rufus is <laughs> a really low <laughs> note for you. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> okay. No. <laughs> uh, no, I'm not gonna do that one. Who is a uh, honestly buying that big homeless man a brand new pair of steel-toed boots is gonna be a better idea than than trying to teach him to sing. I don't know how to sing. And I can't imagine that that's going to scare any ladies into my arms. You know, unless it's like really late at night and she's walking down an alley alone and she just hears the whoa. <laughs> and then she looks around and it's four large, uh, <laughs> four large uh, homeless gentlemen. You know, they're all they're all snapping their fingers in chorus and like walking. Maybe if you got them to do um, um, what's the Michael Jack thriller. Da, da. Oh, that would be great because homeless people look so decrepit and stuff if they were doing yes. the thriller. Like, like while the music I can, I can get some of uh, the more, like, uh, methy-looking ones for that. Oh, do you have methy-looking ones? Oh, I'm in Missouri, yes. Ah, of course, the Missouri capital of the Midwest. I mean, the, the meth capital of the Midwest, yeah. You, yeah. Oh, I love this. I wish I had homeless to use here. I, 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 I you don't can know. come by any time and borrow mine. There's oh, so many you... of these fuckers. Yeah, you gotta we, get them in line for me. We've got them in Raleigh. It, there's way more in the summer, because a lot of them are fake homeless. Yeah. Yeah, I hate the fake homeless. If you're gonna like I like when I see someone and I'm like, you are homeless. <laughs> like I can tell you are legit homeless. Whereas like there's people on like I don't know about where you guys live, but on pretty much every exit off of the highway near the city, there's a bunch of people standing there with like signs mm-hmm. and shit. I guess yeah. for handouts. 
And sometimes I'll be like, okay, you look to be like a white bitch, early 20s, and those are your sneakers are clean. Like, See, I, you're a liar. You're a I'll liar. Man. You. I don't know if they're a liar, but sometimes I think, like, oh, shit, I've got, like, bushes to trim. You know, if I hand you a, uh, what's it? it's called a trimmer, right? What is the you know, gas powered thing that chops bush? A hedge trimmer. If I hand you a hedge trimmer, do you want 20 bucks? Because that might be a win for me. But uh, I think they'd turn me down. I don't think they're looking for work. I think they're looking for money. Yep. Most and... of them will turn you down if you offer food. We've been talking about superheroes for a while, but I, I have my own example of vigilante justice from, uh, from last weekend. Oh, yes! yes. <laughs> All right, everybody, stand up straight. Get your collar on, pop it. Taylor's got a story. <laughs> yeah, this... Uh, so last weekend, me and my dad and my stepmom were driving down to meet up with a bunch of people, mostly family, for the Mizzou tailgate. It was one of the first tailgates, and we were all going there. And so it was supposed to be a fun day. My dad wakes me, or I, I get over there, and I, I sleep the whole way in the car until we get to the parking garage. And we quickly realize, as we're six levels up in this parking garage, like, shit, this place might be entirely full. And, and then we started seeing those cars come back around and pass us, and we're like, fuck, we're screwed. We're going to have to try and find somewhere else in the city. And then as we're taking one of those turns, we look straight ahead, and we see a tall, lanky college student and a recycling bin with like those four circles that you can put plastic cups and, and stuff into. And he was just standing right in the middle of a spot. And my dad stopped, like we're probably 30 feet from him. And my dad goes, is that, is that just a regular spot? Like Taylor, is that just a normal spot? And I kind of like looked around and I'm like, yeah, that's just a normal, that's just a normal spot. And he goes, well, get out and move that kid. And I was like, okay. And so I opened the door in the back and I lean out and I'm like, hey, is that a handicap spot? Like I was trying to be polite as a way of saying like, hey, we're clearly interested in being in this spot that you're just standing in because because you're disobeying the rule, the conduct of society right now. And he goes, no, it's not a handicapped. And I was like, oh, OK, we're going to park there. And he goes, I can't. I'm, I'm saving it. And I'm like, no, nah, that's not how this works. And my dad said, uh, he goes, Taylor, go move that kid in that trash can. And so I got out of the car. This guy's probably three inches taller than me, four inches taller than me, but very lean. I'm like, I'm twice as broad as him. And I walk over to him and I'm like, dude, we're taking this spot. Like, it, it, that's the way this is going to go. It's going to happen. You can't just reserve spots like this. And he's like, I'm a pledge at a fraternity. I'm going to be in so much trouble if they don't let me save this spot. Please just don't take this spot. And I'm like, dude, I don't care. I don't fucking care. And I started dragging away the, uh, the recycling bit away from, out of the spot. And he grabbed the other side of it and like gave it a little tug. And I quickly was like, no, no. And I put it over to the side. And he's still standing there. And I'm like, dude, please move. We're going to park here. Like, it, that's the way it's going to go. And he's like, oh, I bet you feel like you're a big guy right now. You know, bullying someone who's, you know, a freshman in college. And I'm like, dude, I don't want to be doing this. I don't <laughs> want this to happen. I don't want to be in this position. This is uncomfortable as shit. There are people, mind you, this is before a giant football game in an SEC school. So we are not alone in this parking garage. Lots of people walking around as this is happening. And the guy, I, I give him, like, a very gentle, like, push of the arm. Not a shove, just like a trying to usher him out like a crowd out of the way to let my dad pull in safely. And he, and he bucks up and he gets all, you know, I'm not moving. I'm not moving. You know, you're, 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 this is ridiculous. I, I'm going to be in so much trouble. He kept yelling that. I'm going to be in so much trouble if you take the spot for me. I have to reserve it for my frat. And I, and I was like, no, no, you don't get to just reserve spots in public places. That's not how this works. And so I, I bear grabbed the guy around him and I pulled him to the side of the spot and I thought that was enough because then my dad started inching forward and I was like okay the kid knows that he's been beaten and so I let him go and he <laughs> sprints back into the spot right up against my dad's bumper as my dad's like two feet into the spot and he's standing there not letting my dad pull in all the way and I was like dude come on like I don't want to have to do this you are making me do this right now. Like, you can't just reserve spots like this. And so I went over. I picked him up again as he struggled minimally. Not a very strong gentleman. And I carried him over and then just held him for the next six seconds or so as my dad finished pulling in. And then I let him go, of course, because I don't actually want to be doing this. And he turns around at me and he's all, oh, I bet you feel like a big man. Bet you feel like a big man holding me while you take the spot. I'm like, no, dude. Like, I just am here for a football game. Like, I... 
I, I don't want any of this. This is so uncomfortable. Do you not see how many fucking people are looking at us? And my dad and, and my stepmom were still getting out of the car. And he goes, yeah, well, I'm real glad I know where you parked. And then I, I had like a, a public like freak out on the guy to the point that I could tell it was like when a dad yells at a kid how scared he was. Where, where like it was resonating through the parking garage. And I'm like, did you just fucking threaten me? Did you just threaten my property in this parking garage? Are you fucking kidding me? What fraternity are you in? What's your name? What's your name? And he's like, dude, settle down, dude. Like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna do anything to your car. I'm not gonna do anything to your car, I promise. I'm like, oh, after you threaten me, do I need to make sure you go down there and stay away from this car? And my dad got out and he walks up and he goes, click, click. He goes, all right, now I know who to talk about if anything happens to this car. And then <laughs> took a picture of the guy. And then I just grabbed the cooler and left. <laughs> and that was it. It was that's, so... That's, yeah, funny. that's vigilante justice, I would say. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, I hate that. I've, I didn't know that was a real thing. I've seen that, like, YouTube videos of that, of, like, those people who do that, who try to stand in a parking space. It's not like a seat at the movie theater. That's not... That's You can't no. do that. These are for vehicles. Dude, and it is it's rude to... St- it, on a busy day, just say, oh, I'm going to save this parking spot. I can just save this. Like, it's a seat at the movies or a restaurant. Like, no, dude. That's not how society works. You don't just get to save parking spots for your friend, your drunk idiot frat boy friend to show up later. Do no, you and think- if I have to carry you away, that's the way it's going to be. But we're getting this spot. Do you think you would have uh, freaked out on him as much if if it weren't for, you know, your your, your cycle that you're on? Do you, do you think that you got a little <laughs> bit of, of roid rage? Maybe. Oh, I mean, maybe. That, that could be it. You know, I yeah. just... I, so when my dad said, hey, get that guy out of the spot, I just thought, oh, this is what we play for! Slam it. I caused some problems for my mom. I was a leash kid. I got put on a leash in malls. Were any of you leash kids? You no. were, Harley? No. Did you have uh, I was a, a leash body kid. leash? Or did you have I was a, wrist a leash, leash kid. Yeah, wrist leash. And uh, my, I actually was uh, notorious for breaking off the leash. Me and you there. My yeah, the, the wrist the leash had... Me. The wrist leash was a one and done thing because it takes no effort at all for a little child to wriggle out of a wrist people, leash. It people. was when I went to the Black House White Market <laughs> or fucking Nordstrom or whatever with a whole vest like I was going skydiving. You know, it, like I, it was like being a dog where I just start running and just, oof, and just get pulled back. Um, they, uh, they had to close a Macy's once because I, or rather, they had to keep a Macy's open. Because I was so dedicated to my hide and seek game of being inside <laughs> one of those circular clothes things. Oh, those were the best, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I love really hiding. Some serious game. thinking done in those things. You could. You could, <laughs> you could get a lot done in those I things. I wonder how Taylor would have fared under my mom. Like, I don't think you'd have been a runner. That You'd be. It, like, she'd beat the hell out of someone. For yeah, the, for like, those of you who don't run? know, Woody took some licks as a kid. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. I, I just, like, the thought of trying to get away from my mom in a mall scenario or something, like, the the, the consequences were too high. You wouldn't want risky. that. I, uh, I did yeah. something else where I, I must have been seven. My brother was probably five. I, uh, you know those wagons, like those play school wagons that you pull that like you see moms walking down the street and there's two kids in there. Um, I took one of those and we had an enormous hill in my backyard when I was growing up and a giant willow tree popped right in the middle of it. But it was the only tree there and the woods were hundreds of yards back. And so I told my brother we were going to, we were going to have a fun ride down the thing. What I didn't tell him is that I would not be joining him and I was going to tape him up so he couldn't. He couldn't get out. So I, so I taped him. I taped his arms together. And, you know, the only thing you have to do is the older brother, like, because, like, obviously, if he resisted, even like five years and seven years old, he would have escaped. All you have to do is the older brother is be like, yeah, it's going to be so much fun. Yeah, it's going to be great. Can you believe it? Yeah, we're going to have a good time. And then he was all taped up. And I remember standing there with my hand on this wagon, ready to push him down the hill to see what would happen, like, as, on this in this fucking play school thing, oh. and I hear my dad from the balcony behind me, Taylor, do not let go of that wagon. <laughs> and I was like, and I hear immediately the telltale signs of an adult running quickly down the stairs. Oh. Boom, 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 boom. Like, all right, it is now or never. And so I let go of it. <laughs> 
No! <laughs> <laughs> I immediately, did not know where this is going. Yeah, and immediately, it starts careening down this hill. Boom, 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 boom. Like, my brother's bouncing up and down. And I, had, I hadn't aimed him that well. I was like, he's just going to go straight into the middle of the fucking yard. What could possibly go wrong? He'll slow to a stop and be fine. I'm not going to get spanked. No. I just let go of it. And he goes straight into that willow tree as no, he fucking hit it? 20 miles an hour. Oh. It, it was, I mean, not 20. It was fucking quick. And he, obviously not strapped in. Hits the tree, Whoa, you know, he was bloodies his, his forehead. No, 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 I taped him up. I didn't tape him into the wagon. So he can't he can't protect himself, basically. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Correct. It was, it was uh, hindsight's twenty twenty on all this. I've had a lot of time to mature. <laughs> but there was nothing more scary than seeing him hitting that, that tree and then turning around and being like, oh, no. Like, that wasn't worth oh, it. Oh, yeah. And now he's here. Now he's here. And that was, I, I never taped anyone up and pushed them down a hill again. Well, suffice it to say. <laughs> but that was the first thing I ever drank ever in, in high school was, because uh, uh, I didn't get started like Woody in middle school. Uh, I drank in high school, though. And it was Bacardi 151. Mm. And one of, it, what, Bacardi 151, it's 151 proof. So what Man. you guys, what you're this drinking is, right now, what is, is 80 proof. 80 proof. 80 proof. Yeah, so you double. And, but I had no experience with alcohol, and so my friend's older brother, who was back from like college, like he was like eight years older than us or whatever, he was like, "Yeah, you guys can do, you know, whatever you want. I don't give a shit. Just don't bother me." And I was <laughs> like, "Do you have like stuff to drink? Like we're gonna have a bunch of people over then if you're just setting up invitations." And he was like, "Yeah, I got like a bottle of uh, of rum in my cl closet." He's like, "You know, you good with that?" And I'm like, "Sure." I'm a, I'm a kid. I have no idea. Yeah, I, I will say everything. Everything. And I'm yeah. like, yeah. And so I went back there and took like a pretty couple of pretty big guzzles of it. And because <laughs> I had no point of reference, I'm like, man, alcohol's bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whew, ah, I feel hot. Oh, and I was, within 15 minutes, like I started to feel it and I was feeling good. And I was yeah. like, I want this to continue. I'm going to go back in that closet and drink <laughs> some more of that Bacardi 151. Yes. I got fucking shithoused on it. And I was so drunk. I was just like, okay, but now I'm like, I'm just going to switch it to beer because I don't want to get too drunk. <laughs> else have been like, you're already gone, dude. Like, you've taken like five yeah. pulls of 151 and you're a kid. You know, uh, oh, that was a horrible first drinking memory. Uh, I also my... was appreciating how cool the slate tile was that <laughs> evening i i've told this story things. before but i don't know if everyone knows it I, I was i was in seventh grade so i was either 12 or 13 years old and in ocean city in the winter time because it's a resort in town, maryland or uh, jersey. new jersey yeah. um I, i'll make up a number 75 percent of the houses are empty something like yeah. that and being complete assholes we just considered the empty houses to be ours as well so we broke into them <laughs> and stole Shit. their alcohol <laughs> and we would uh bring girls with us and try Jesus to get them Christ. to do things yeah and uh we did some shit but i didn't get laid or anything not at 12 but uh <laughs> 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 but um uh that's what we would do we would go to these homes we would steal their alcohol and as far as what we drank I don't know. We called it a kamikaze, which I'm, I've later learned is an actual drink. But yeah. I thought a kamikaze was when you took a little bit of every drink so they wouldn't notice it was it's missing. It's an Irish ah, Michael garbage Scott. egg. Or, or, <laughs> yeah. I call it a little bit of everything. <laughs> That's what we drank. Uh, jungle so, juice. Oh, that, that was the worst. My, like, we would do that at my friend's place because his parents, like this is also in high school, where they had an awesome liquor cabinet. But of course, you can't grab one bottle and guzzle it down. He'll be like, where's my maker's mark? Uh, no, you maybe you maybe you even. drank the entire thing and forgot. I don't know. Like no, you, <laughs> so you you just have like a giant like juice glass where you'd take like a little like third of a shot from everything, and it was vile. It was mm. it truly tasted disgusting. like death. It doesn't it was, always. But as a kid, right. you're like, I'm just trying yeah. to get fucked. I'm just trying to get <laughs> fucked up. Here's the thing. I I was such a. I lived so far away from all the people in high school, um, like 45 minutes away, that I never got invited out to the parties. Or when I did, I was like, Well, how do I? Like, I I don't know people well enough at school that I could lie and be like, Mom, I'm going to Jay's house, but I wasn't going to Jay's house. So um, one night, my friend locally was like, Hey, man. You know, your parents don't drink a lot. My parents don't drink a lot. But what if we combined our resources? Let's skim off the top and like 
uh, my parents are gone. You come over for a sleepover. Mm-hmm. Like your mom will be fine. We'll play Halo all night. And I was like, oh hell yeah. So I, I like got a wa- a plastic water bottle, and I it was like not even halfway full of just a myriad of disgusting shit. And that was the first time. I think I was like sixteen. I was like, this. I we watched infomercials, and my friend was like, dude, shaking your head is so heavy. I was like, okay. He's like, no, you gotta try it. It's really heavy. It's about it. That's all the. That's all the fun we had. I was like, yeah, infomercials were pretty cool. We were too drunk so to play Halo. So you only got drunk enough to not appreciate it? Yeah. Drunk enough <laughs> to, to not play the game you gave right? her there for. I was just like, this isn't that great. And then I <clears throat> I didn't go back until, like, literally college. And then I was like, oh, never mind. That's you know funny. what I don't... I don't, ahead, understand why kids, I, I don't understand why kids don't make their own liquor. Now, I know why I didn't. I didn't Are know you how. Kidding? You know how hard it is to chemist. distill stuff? It's so fucking easy no. that it's, it's criminal. It, it literally, it's it's sugar. If you're a child doing it. It is. Yeah. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it's sugar, juice, uh, hot water, and yeast. Right? Like, I, yeah. It, it, and you just put it in a bucket. In or, a dark bucket. But uh, the problem uh, is, you have uh, to put it. You have to make it. Like when your dad comes out, and you're just like, oh, this. <laughs> It's a science project. Like, yeah, he wouldn't know. You know, put it in your closet, put it in, under your bed, whatever. You know, and the longer you wait, the stronger it gets. You know, you can I got make some wine grade stuff. So and... much easier to play Hey Mister and get a guy to get like go buy you alcohol. I want to tell you. Oh yeah, uh, my friends have all played the Hey Mister. The the first time I got caught drinking and was going to get in trouble for it, uh, I left my phone like playing music or something like that. And I got a text, and my mom checked it because it was playing music for like outside of the pool where my friends and I were, and because people were still coming over. And so she checked it, and she came out, and she was like, "Taylor, get up here!" And I was like, "Oh, something's awry." And so <laughs> I went up there and was like, "What? What's up?" And she's like, "You want to explain this to me?" And my friend had texted me like, "I'm on the way. I didn't forget to bring shot glasses this time, haha, or whatever." And I was like, "I don't know." You know, <laughs> we're, we were only going to drink a little bit. And she's like, you tell all of your friends to, to go home right now. And so I had to tell my friends to go and like just sit in my room for a while and wait. And then my parents, my, my dad got home. They were going to give me a little talk. And it was like they got home and they said, we're going to talk to you about this tomorrow. We're going to talk about, you know, to ourselves, you know, a little parental communal meeting over this. And then we'll talk to you about it tomorrow. And I was like, all right, well, I guess I'll just sweat this out and hope I'm not in too much trouble. I'll be going to college and like. A year, I guess, so it's not too bad. They can't really get me. The next day, uh, some things were, you know, came to understanding between my parents, and it became clear that they were going to, oh, they came down, and they were going to talk to me about it, but the news they gave me instead was, we're getting a divorce. Oh well, you were out of the hot seat. And so I didn't like, get in a lick of trouble. <laughs> I was like, well, I'm going to my friend's house then. And they were like, like yeah, I should have just, I was like, well, now I need some booze. You know, it, it wasn't like, like this had been a long time coming. It wasn't like a huge, huge shock. But right. it was almost like a macabre feeling of like, man, that kind of sucks. But somebody is going to get to do whatever they want until college. You know? <laughs> no. My- anyway, I was still... I, I'm I, I'm 25. I'm still in the midst of this. My Lord of the Rings obsession mm-hmm. that they made 500 replica Witch King helmets. The Witch King. The Witch King was the Lord of the Nazgul. If you don't know who they are, you know, they had... Uh, it's a side of you who, haven't seen before, Tilly. I, I could list Baradour. some of the Nazgul right now. But <laughs> they had this... The Witch King had this giant helm... That you'll see in the movies the when King of uh, Angmar. the Witch King of Angmar, yes, oh, okay. the you. Witch King of Angmar, and he had this giant helmet, and I bought it, and it was something that uh, I had it bought for me rather, and mm-hmm. you, when you put it on, it was heavy, like it was fucking heavy. It was something that only a mighty man could wear <laughs> while he was fighting. And I went to college, didn't think about it. I just thought when I go home. My Witch King of Angmar uh, helm will still be <laughs> on its display case above my bed because that's where it was. When I slept in my big bed, I had a king, uh, uh, queen-size bed, and it had a big like um, kind of armoire-style thing around it, and it had a big shelf behind the bed. And I had my Witch King of Angmar head right there. And I was like, all right, I don't need to bring that to college. 
I don't want to turn off the girls right away. I'll slowly introduce them to my <laughs> Lord of the Rings like, obsession. I can just imagine you like like bringing the girl back to your dorm room, and be like, like you like put it on and be like, yeah. hey, <laughs> what do you think? She's like, I just, think I should, I should grab my pepper spray really discreetly right now. <laughs> <laughs> but that was basically it. I had that that helmet. I went to college. I came back. Uh, I didn't. If it happened before this, I didn't. I didn't notice it. But I came back that winter break, my freshman year. And I went into my room, and I looked up there, and I didn't really think of anything of it. I wasn't looking for it. And, you know, slept a couple nights before I realized, like, man, like, Where's the I witch had king? something over here. I had a Witch King helmet. Yeah, where the hell is my Witch King of Angmar helmet? I'm like the Witch And so king. I went and asked my younger brother and was like, where, where is my Witch King helmet, you dick? You know where it is, asshole. And he was like, oh, yeah, my, 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 my friend was playing with that. I don't know where it is. Maybe in your closet. And I was like, maybe in my closet. Okay. So I go back. I check my closet. I find my Witch King of Angmar, one of 500. <laughs> this isn't one of those bullshit like, oh, we'll make a new one like, and, and call it one of 500 every two months to trick idiots into buying it. This was an actual one of 500 because there are very few people willing to pay $700 oh for a God. Witch King helmet. And so <laughs> I got it. I had it there. I went into that closet, and I was honestly, like, distraught when I saw it sitting there totally broken, totally ruined. All the spines that came out of it, obviously it's some kind of plaster. Yeah, the, the big ones are on the head. It's made of some kind of plaster, but inside it's just a metal bar holding that up, holding that little bit of plaster up. And... Like, the three inches between the tip and the bottom part of every single helmet spike was broken off. So it was just a metal bar going from the helmet ring up into, like, a weak little pinnacle at the top. And I was, I was honestly so fucking upset by that that I, I don't think I talked to anyone in my family for a day or two. Because I was like, how could you have let this happen? <laughs> you know that I love Lord of the Rings and that this was my favorite Lord of the Rings possession. Fuck the Gimli axe and all that. This is my Lord of the Rings obsession. And they let it go by the wayside and they ruined it. And I, oh my god, even thinking about this pisses me off. Because <laughs> I wish I still fucking had this. This is something that could have lasted. It could have lasted. I, I could have given it to my grandkids and said, hey, you could put it on right now. To be autistic in the future, wear this. Like, I, Do you have oh, it right now? Do, does it exist in your apartment? No, it, it's thrown away years ago because it was ruined to the point of no repair. Like, there was no way to fix it. It was it was completely uh, ruined. Your story the, beats the mine, chins, I think. There were chin spines, and they were totally broken and bent to the side like someone dropped it harshly. Not even dropped it, like said, fuck this, and threw it down. But I don't ever know what actually happened to it or who broke it. But goddamn, that oh. witch helmet was dope. For the panel, uh, this is a Patreon AMA question. If you don't know, we do this Patreon, and at one of the levels, maybe ten dollars, you can ask questions, influence the show. What made that weird kid weird at your school? Oh, oh okay. Oh, oh, and it, it was... says Taylor, no bandit stories, pooper otherwise. No, this this is not a poop bandit guy. Uh, this was a guy. I think I may have mentioned him in the past, but it was a long, long time ago. There was this kid who was really fat and really weird he was a year under me i think maybe he was in my grade and i just didn't realize a year under me i think and during like lunchtime he would obviously wolf all his food down within the first three to four minutes and then he'd have 25 minutes left of lunch to do stuff and so he would like go like in the side of the lunchroom where it was like just not many tables being used or anything and so he wasn't in the way and he would do like slow motion like karate by himself oh my God. over there and it, just let me let me paint the picture of this guy he's about five eight no exaggeration two thousand pounds <laughs> none <laughs> and he he would wear doesn't matter if it's you know early april and it's hot as balls outside he'd wear a big black trench coat black baggy uh pants like those uh emo kind of pants with chains on them or maybe goth ah. is better than emo and then like some sort of invader zim t-shirt and fingerless black gloves with also Invader Zim on it. And he would do fake karate 
by himself over there and do like all this, all this like weird little maneuvers and all always slow motion. And every, not always, every once in a while, he busts into a combo bah, 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 and do that kind of thing, shadow box. And <laughs> this, this uh, more southern kid who <laughs> went to our school once was just like, uh, he, he wasn't there for long, but the first year he was there, that kid was like doing his fucking thing and he was sitting and talking to us. He's like, the fuck is that kid doing? <laughs> and we're like he just pretends to be a karate man just ignore him and he's like nah i'm gonna go ask him and so he, he went over there and we're like all right I, I gotta follow josh over here to see what he does and he's like what are you what are you doing over here every day doing karate by yourself and the kid just is like uh, immediately clams up gets embarrassed sh shuts down oh. i don't even remember what he said to respond i i i, I felt bad for him me did I your friend bad. go over like to mock him was he aggressive was or was he just oh, no. genuinely Not curious hey, weirdo! yeah <laughs> hey goofball like, what the what, fuck are you doing over what here? was the vibe that he brought to the question the vibe was uh a mix of trying to get an answer and mocking okay in a way and when if the kid had like come back with like a I'm practicing to be a soldier for when X Y Z happens or I just love Invader Zim or something like I would have been like okay this kid's just weird but he like immediately clammed up and was so meek about it that I was like oh let's mm. just let the kid do his karate yeah and then and that's all that happened he, and so he, we all we never him. bothered him again and so and every day we trained for months. <laughs> <laughs> every day. Yeah. even now every <laughs> afternoon at lunch we all meet up down at the park and we do our kata. Because At some someday, point, yeah. the Overlord will come down, and we must be prepared for him. <laughs> At some point, that kid snapped on by being bullied by some kid in his own grade, and they got into yeah. a fight. I didn't see it though; it was just something that got spread around the school. It was like during their gym period, yeah. and, and they both got they both got suspended. That's there was not no... the question. Who won? Oh, uh, it, I think the way it was described to me and it was so long ago i'm it's hard to remember what i think it was so is that long the, ago. the skinnier the skinnier kid <laughs> like 8 years was, ago <laughs> was getting the upper edge on him and then the fat kid tackled him and threw all his training out the window went straight for a tackle <laughs> that's the problem and, he's and, been training <laughs> striking alone for, for yeah, so long his ground game was shit <laughs> and then of course the teacher comes over and breaks it up yeah so, see i wanted to hear oh he had been training every yes. day at lunch and we mocked him until the day the school shooter came <laughs> and Lenny the Stinker walked up to him and used the five finger palm heart exploding technique on him. Mm. And before, and the man just dropped dead, just dropped dead and just front killed of us. him. And we and all saw the cheered. last four beats of the heart. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I, I've been throughout this whole story, I've been trying to think of who the weird kid was at, my, at, at school. And, and I'm really coming up kind of blank. There was this one kid named Anthony. And Anthony clearly had a rough home life. And so he was always sleepy when he'd get to school. Like it was clear he'd been up the entire night. Like nobody had a, this kid didn't have a bedtime. And so he was just staying up all night long, probably till three, four in the morning or something like that. And he, he, he'd always had like these real dark circles under his eyes and he would act out, I suppose you would say. And he would just like, like in the entryway to the classroom, he would lay there like, so that if you wanted to come in, like the door was going to hit him and you had to like, step over him into the classroom he would lay there and what curl a up terrible place why would he choose that spot i don't know okay. and he would do that thing that like i think the three stooges would do like where they get on their side and go whoop, 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 and sort of <laughs> run but they're on they're lying on their side running mm -hmm, so that they just mm -hmm. sort of spin in place and he would just do that and he would take the the, the entryway carpet which is filthy right it's like, <laughs> there's no there's no shag on this thing it's just like industrial carpet they clean with a rubber it every mat. summer <laughs> twice that now they've cleaned this thing and he would get it and like roll himself up in it like a burrito and like just lay there and he would he would like moan and and like yell he, like, like like incomprehensible uh, things like peacock, yeah! and and the teacher like knew how to handle it she'd ignore that motherfucker she pretended uh. she was just like she's like don't look at him don't look at him i'm like well that's clearly what you've chosen to do teacher like, like she's just like not gonna she's like don't look at him that's what he wants that's what he wants and i remember we had that one day where where like <clears throat> this is like this is early in elementary school 
third, no, fourth grade, I'd say. I guess not that early. I remember there was a, a time when like maybe the question was asked, what is your favorite food? Um, or what is like, and maybe like we were writing it down. I think it was really a writing exercise just to get kids interested in writing or something mm -hmm. like that. But I just remember, what are your favorite foods? And, you know, everybody wrote what their favorite foods were. And, you know, my, I think mine was like hamburger steak and, and potatoes. And like his was hot dog. And he misspelled hot dog. <laughs> <laughs> Man, that's a <laughs> hot dog is a layup. <laughs> it's I, phonetic. I know. I, I want to laugh at the guy in like I don't know second grade. They asked me what my worst subject was, and I put spilling. <laughs> 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 Nailed it. <laughs> <laughs> this is a kid funny. who knows himself. <laughs> Self evaluation skills <laughs> off the chart. <laughs> your worst subject spilling. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny. <laughs> I thought it was funny. My mom was mad. She thought oh, I didn't oh, study hard enough. Mad at that. That's hilarious. Uh, she didn't if like my it. kid brought that home. It's I like you did it on purpose. No, I didn't. But she didn't like it at all. <laughs> she thought you'd done it on purpose. Like 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 you were no. fucking like an eight year old Ronnie Dangerfield. No, or something? she like, accurately like, oh, deduced oh, that <laughs> I was really terrible at this subject and needed to put more effort into it. God oh. damn it! <laughs> that's that's how Just... it went. Your I hope your wife gives you lots truck. of hugs. <laughs> I'm like, what? Your moms didn't get mad at you for doing poorly in school? You, mu they must have. If you did, probably not. Taylor never did. No, spelling was mm. like, I loved spelling because it, all, it just came natural. It was easy. At the end of uh, every PKA, we do topics, and they're usually not real words like Hofstetter. I'm like Taylor, need a spell check on this, <laughs> <laughs> and he's great at it. He gets everything right. It's not a great thing to be good at, especially as an adult. Nobody's impressed. Um, <laughs> nobody, give me a word, any word, and then they give you a tough one. You're like, well, not that one. Give me, <laughs> no, 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 not that from a medical textbook, asshole. I don't know that one. Yeah. yeah. Can you spell, what the hell is it, like fish neovaginally or something? <laughs> yeah. I could do that because that's uh, neovaginoplasty. Dude, so in, yeah. Any other weird kids you guys can think of? In I'm high school... I wasn't near anywhere. So what happened in my high school is they split the class in two. You self-selected. And one half was called college prep. And the other half was called business. But it really kind of meant not college bound. And uh, I was in college prep. So all the kids maybe on like the autism spectrum or who might qualify for this question would probably be in the other one. You know, like they wouldn't be in college prep. The weird kids. Now I feel bad. Like there was a girl who was gay. She was out of the closet. So she had to go to the nurse's office for gym class and she had a like short Why? hair cuz she wouldn't change with the girls like they they didn't want her to change with her you know oh, in the locker they wouldn't room let her change with them in the, uh, you know I don't That had to be it because I it think was, it was she wouldn't be like I don't want to see a bunch of hot girls naked better take me to the nurse's office <laughs> like, <laughs> and, and hang had, out with the hot nurse you know? I, girls the girls had been like no she can't change with us. She's I think you're right. Man. But I also feel like she didn't fight it. It was like, if the girls don't want me, then I don't want to be there. Of you course. Know? Was yeah. it out of fight nowhere? It. Or did like they catch her playing Clitar Hero <laughs> in the corner once? <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I don't think there was any like uh, incident that spurned her getting... And she was in the girls' locker room, and then she got removed from it. Yeah, I like it, Taylor. Um, <laughs> and then there was another girl who was just too heavy. And, and I don't... You know, you always mock the, like, you know, thyroid or whatever. But if a 14-year-old is 250 pounds overweight, she may have some sort of medical thing that caused that. While we're talking about pranks, uh, that same guy, the, the poop bandit, he, uh, he oh. had another prank oh. in his repertoire. Is this where, the story uh, you keep forgetting to tell? Yes. Yeah, it was the one I keep forgetting to tell. <sighs> he, uh, Settle in. Here it he, comes. So the way I, I told you guys, like, the end, but the way, like, the beginning of it, he, uh, we were 17, and so he stayed at school after it closed. Uh, it was open until like 8 o'clock because there's sports practices and shit like that. People are walking around. He hid in a bathroom, of course. Just <laughs> hid in a stall, you know, played with his phone or whatever, sat up on the toilet and just waited until like, what he said was like midnight or 1 a.m. Just goofing <laughs> around the school when everybody was gone. And uh, with him in his backpack, in his locker... He bought a ton of Mighty Putty. And what Mighty Putty is, it's you can buy it on late night TV or you could. And it was like this product where it was like, you, you know, 
take a scoop out of here and you seal it on anything and bam, it's going to stay. It's going to fucking stay. Like there's like they, they showed it where uh, they had a chain between like two trucks or something and they made a link out of Mighty Putty and they let it settle and then the two trucks start driving and it's like, <laughs> look at this Mighty Putty. It's not going to break. And it's like, I've seen that. that, that yeah. Shit, yeah, it's it's not going to fucking break. It's it like JB so, Weld. Yes, mm-hmm. it is so powerful. And he took his couple of tubs of mighty putty and the little spatula it comes with and he went around to almost every door in the school inner and outer and smeared mighty putty into every keyhole (laughs) every keyhole he smeared mighty putty and let it dry and so the next morning when all the janitors came in to get the school ready to go nobody could get into the school so when we showed up that day for school a couple hours later the front doors to the school had been removed there were no front <laughs> doors on the school because they had to remove the doors. They had to so take they them off the hinges. Off. Yeah, they took the doors off the hinges because they had they had to replace everything. He didn't just put it in the keyhole. You know the crack between the door and then there's a little the, the jam, the door jam. Mm-hmm. He would smear that whole thing too. And a couple of the teachers that he didn't like, um, the one his basically his handler or his wrangler, as we called her, uh, who had to keep an eye on him as he was going around the school every day because he wasn't allowed to walk around unsupervised. He had to have a supervisor. Uh, he had a wrangler. And so he just he coated every side of her of the wrangler's door in Mighty Putty. And they had to – oh, he, there was so much damage. And somehow they didn't, they didn't put it together. I, 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 knew, I know that they knew it was him. Oh, yeah, they knew it was him, but they couldn't peg him. You know, so they no, had to call him in. No cameras? Uh, no, no, they, there weren't any cameras in our school at the time. After after that guy came in and uh, stole the computers and you know cooked his own shit in the kitchen, they put cameras in at, at our school to prevent any any further. Yeah, there are cameras now in that school. Yeah, yeah and, uh, good. There there weren't at the time. They learned their lesson. I don't yeah. think ours had cameras, but they had motion detectors. So I don't know if he would have got away with it where we were. Mm. Mm. That's hilarious. That's such a good way to just ruin their their shit too. Because I don't think you can do anything about that if you get it in there good. No, like, no, he just he, he just really got off on upsetting people and stressing out authority. Because it's like, imagine being that principal coming in for work. He's already got in the back of his head like, God, oh, if that kid shits in another bathroom, I'm going to have a fucking revolt from these janitors and they're not going to handle it. I'm going to have to be the one scrubbing off, ha ha ha, any closer yet and shit on the bathroom. I'm going to scrub that off. God, I hope he just gets it under control. And then he shows up, you know, <laughs> rubbing his eyes from sleep with his coffee, and he tries to stick his key in. Just, oh, that's weird. I must have missed. Uh, no. Oh, fuck! Fuck! Just yelling. Can't get into the fucking school because this rabble rouser did He also did it. Uh, he broke the vending machines that way. That dollar slot, he smeared a bunch in there, too, just so he couldn't put shit in the vending machine anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he was such a such piece of shit. <laughs> I would be so afraid to do that because in the back of my head with a prank like that is, mm. all right, I might get caught. So if I do get caught, let's make sure this is, this is something that can be chalked up to boyish hijinks or something like that. He's going all or nothing. He's yeah. like, fuck him. If you put a can, motherfucker. Put a <laughs> roundup penis on the football field. And then they'll charge you for grass seed. You know, you owe us twenty three dollars and seventy five cents. There was like sixteen thousand dollars in damage or something. Like it's it could be very expensive. Oh yeah, yeah. Dude, and it's so much. He did another thing that he got uh, a big. I remember a big group of people got called into the office, like being interrogated because, uh, like, I didn't know till later, but it was like, well, you know, so and 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 so come into the office, report to the office. And it was like, well, what the fuck is this about? These are the rabble rousers. And <laughs> later we. That a teacher like went out to go leave for lunch or get something, and there were two like big nails leaned up against the back of her wheels, so that as soon as she backed out, both of her back tires <laughs> were you know, not like pop, but it would the nail would go in and it would you know puncture it and either quickly deflate or slowly deflate, and uh, that was decided that it was a very dangerous thing that she could be like dead on the road or something if that happened. And so uh, there was like a cop or something there to, to interrogate them and ask them. Never found out it was him. I don't even know if that one was him. But uh, yeah, this that that one was even worse than the Mighty Putty, I think, because that could actually get someone hurt instead of... instead mm. of. Uh, there was a teacher just, who drove something I've... small. It was. It, do you remember what a Chevy Sprint was? I don't know if yeah. you guys know that. It, I can't think of an equivalent car today, but it was tiny. It was a very, very tiny car. I think it was a three-cylinder motor and got like 45 miles of the gallon. Three cylinders. It was like a smart car almost, but not even less cool. And uh, 
Yeah. They, they what they did. I swear, I wasn't involved at all. But like a bunch of guys from the football team didn't like this teacher. So in the parking spot, like there was a parking lot outdoors. They took it and they rotated it sideways so that now he was stuck <laughs> in between the two cars next to him. And they were just, you know, jumping and jumping and jumping and jump until it rotated sideways. And they did this to that fucker like all the time until he until they got caught. It was like a regular Until they got a bigger car. <laughs> it, it was like a regular thing, like, ah, oh, let's get Mr. McNally and lock him in his spot again. And he have to yeah. wait for one of the people next to him to leave first because he was rotating. <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> uh, uh shitty behavior. God. We would uh, most of my pranks would take place outside of school because I had gotten in a lot of trouble at school and it was usually like, you know, oh, you can't get stuck at get in trouble again or you're not going to pass or you can't get in trouble again or you know, you you'd only miss 5 days. And like a minor offense was like a 2-day suspension. When I say minor, I mean like when I hit the teacher in the head or like um the stink bomb massacre, like that time I put stink bombs all over the school. Like those are each two day suspensions. So like you don't have a lot of room to play. So we would throw we would go to people's houses after school at night and stuff and egg them or, you know, throw a big thing of fireworks up on their front doorstep, like a big roll, like 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 five hundred firecrackers go off on your doorstep. I'd use a cigarette as a uh like a timer. You know, you just uh light a cigarette, tear the cigarette in half and then stick it onto the fuse and then when it burns down mm -hmm. that way you get that way you can jog back up the road yeah. you know give yourself like a minute before the thing actually goes off be in your car and be leaving and like i remember like we'd be getting right back to the car and you'd hear and just be like, yeah <laughs> like, as we drive away yeah 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 yeah, yeah. we do that shit all the time that same kid told me he did. I never believed him for this one, but uh, there was a teacher that was not liked by anyone. And just one day, like he left after lunch, and it was like, oh, I guess he wasn't feeling well. And like a week later, uh, the poop bandit that guy told me, uh, I don't know why he he I, he I was always so privy to these things. Like, we weren't good friends. <laughs> Wait a minute, but he, you I weren't he, the poop bandit, were you? I was not the poop bandit. No, no, I, <laughs> these are really ballsy things. I'm not the poop bandit. Um, but he told me, uh, yeah, you know the reason that, and he talked like that. He's like, you know the reason Mr. Johnson left last week? And I was like, no, Mike, why did he leave last week? He's like, I put, I put five tabs of acid in his coffee in the teacher's lounge. And I was like, did you actually put a bunch of acid in his coffee? He's like, yeah, man, yeah. My buddy sells some, and I got a bunch of it, and I put it on his coffee. He was like freaking out, man. And he left. He had never another teacher drive him home. And I was like, looking. I didn't know whether to believe him or not, but. <laughs> that is one of the genuinely meanest things that you could do to yeah. someone is like as you're like teaching and you like like imagine like, you point at a kid like Jesse shut up 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 and like your arm starts like extending towards her in a weird <laughs> I feel like oh, this that's... is something that would happen to the alternate universe teacher version of Quibble Cop right just someone yeah, drugs yeah. his food drugs you <laughs> yeah, he didn't even get drugged like it was funny his stories where he was like and then I got drugged and I didn't know what to do and I asked him is there drugs in this and he said yes so I take it and it's like well, <laughs> well then you didn't get drugs so, I gave free drugs so what you're saying is you do a lot of drugs yeah. okay <laughs> <laughs> that's not how his stories went. Yeah, I, that's what it sounded yeah. like to me. It sounded like it sounded like lo it was a little lost in translation almost. He, he he'd be like, you know, they they drugged me. Oh, oh so, so they gave you drugs? Yeah, they put they gave me the drugs and I took them. I was drugged. Like, <laughs> no, he's... but you knew they were drugs. Well, I had a pretty good idea. But... <laughs> yeah. That was a uh, he, he'd be like, I thought it might have been a pot cookie, so I asked him. They said it wasn't, so I ate it. Uh... I, I like it. He, he he's like. You know, there's always drugs in my food. So I asked him, are there drugs in my food? And they're like, no. <laughs> but, you know, there's always drugs. So I knew. We brought it's a big plate of regular cookies to this blowout party. <laughs> Who likes, you know, oatmeal raisin? Fucking nobody. There's drugs. Like, nobody's eating regular cookies at a big blowout jam. I thought they were snorting powdered sugar, so I had some. <laughs> then you know, who knew? They, they, there's, there's a little. I think there's a little plausible deniability built in mm. the Quebble Cop story. Like, yeah, I just keep getting drugged wherever I go, man. Ah. Gentlemen, I need to step away. Apparently, there is a toilet-based emergency downstairs that I need. Well, to... we look forward to the story. <laughs> Bring a camera. <laughs> Actually, yeah. I'll be right back. <laughs> so. Uh, that rem so have you ever had any? T Let's talk about this toilet-based emergencies. <laughs> have you ever had a toilet overflow on you, a la 
Dumb and Dumber or something and just make a real shitty, awful mess. Oh, yeah. Whether the scenario is embarrassing or not, let's hear about that. I want to know, have you done this before? <laughs> yes, I've done this. This is like one of those scenarios that you don't think about ever because like when even the thought of it pops in your head you just ah ah, ah. <laughs> bad <laughs> just try and not think about you it. cringe and wish that weren't you you were remembering <laughs> yeah, you just you just go that was ah. somebody else that was a past yeah, life right that, i didn't that do that me. that wasn't me no i was okay it was like the perfect storm of awful it was i was at uh, my girlfriend in high school's house after school and parent parents house parents house yeah okay and we were hanging out there and I, every Thursday, we got Qdoba in the morning. That's like burritos? This Friday, mm -hmm. and I had been blocked up all day. Like, I hadn't shit since the, the previous burrito. And so I go in, go to the bathroom. I was going to go up in the upstairs one where it was a bit safer. But yeah, she was in there and was like, oh, you just go downstairs. The one in the right by the entranceway to the house, that bathroom. And I was just like, all right, well, I, I hop in there take a, just a foul abomination of a shit and <laughs> <laughs> just go to flush it and have... Now, let me ask you this, this about the shit. Was it one of those that, as horrible as it is, it's over in, like, seven seconds flat? <laughs> oh, it was... It, it was a, it was a like, speed run. You know? it, it's it one of those where, you, where like, you have to sit quickly so you don't just shit everywhere. Like, like, yeah, you have to, you're like shuffling down. You have to sit. It, it comes out so quickly and so much force that like there are waves splashing up <laughs> the side of the bowl. But uh, so I go in there and take the shit, and I feel so much better immediately. Uh, flush, about to leave, and I see, I see that scary look, that that tepid filth water moving a little closer to the top. Oh, it probably just takes a bit. Some toilets raise higher. It, keep, it keeps coming. keeps coming. It gets to the point where, like, I'm, like, like willing it. It's like, stop, 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 stop. <laughs> and it gets to, like, the right on the, the rim of the bowl, just soupy shit water. And, <laughs> and like, like an idiot, instead of just plunging it and trying to get it under control, I Plus go, in. <laughs> let's, let's it's give it a go. We've been taught since the time we were four. You flush to get the poop to go away, and you yes. just do it without thinking. Did it without thinking, immediately realized the error of my ways as it just cascades down the side all over the place. Like, three minutes later after this, when I'm like, hey, hey, like yelling for her that her, their whole foyer is covered in shit. <laughs> her, 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 her mom, mom gets home, and uh. she walks in through the front door, and like, of course, I was right by there, and she was like, oh, Jesus, oh, my God, oh, my God, <laughs> and I'm just standing there beat red because I just pooped the, the foyer. Oh, and, God. Uh, it was, like, even thinking about it now, I'm cringing so hard. All right, so, so this is a very, there's something about Mary type scenario. What happened with you and this girl post you shitting in her house? Uh, I mean, it, it wasn't like a huge freak out. Like, I think she was just as You're embarrassed standing? Oh, as I, I was almost, where she was like, oh, God, this guy's shitting all over my house. <laughs> Parents already don't <laughs> like him. But, uh, yeah, it obviously didn't end up working out quite a while yeah. later, but I don't think it was shit related. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, what did that, I walk into? That's, uh, that, that is hilarious. Um, yep. <laughs> we were, so I was asking the guys if they've ever had that scenario where a toilet overflows on you and poop goes everywhere and especially if it's been an embarrassing scenario and Taylor had a great one he, he did yeah. this at a couple friends house and had a real <laughs> shit explosion across their foyer and the mother came home and discovered so great story my I, I, face I, is hot from just having relived that in my so head just like oh my god nice like, it's, I, I feel like people aren't considered like, like if someone asks you to use their bathroom I always consider like he might have to take a disgusting shit. I should make sure he gets to like the bathroom, like away from everyone or something like that. That's always in my head. But I think like I'm in the vast minority. Like like I've I remember one time I was hanging out with like an ex girlfriend and like her friend. There's like three girls and me, and I'm like, hey, can I use the bathroom? And I have to take a horrible shit. Like my farts are so obnoxious <laughs> from that I know the quality of shit like that's gonna thick come. and soupy, <laughs> hot, hot. They burn. <laughs> they burn. Like this is gonna be a rough one. But like I said, this is it, it, like I said, this isn't gonna be a prolonged straining constipated poop. No, this is gonna be <laughs> and then like and the trick is this. You got to flush as soon as the shit starts coming out. That way it's not even staying in the room. It's just going straight in and into the pipe. 
You're not, you don't want a, a big pile of shit to be in the house, which is essentially what a toilet is. You want to flush during the shit. But still, stunk up the whole room, and I'm <laughs> sure, like, 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 and, and so then, like, later I asked to go to the bathroom again, and I got a piss, and I could tell that, like, her friend didn't want me to use her toilet, because she thinks I'm going to, like, <laughs> shit all over her bathroom and stink it all up. It's just embarrassing. You know, it, uh, the it, trick is to turn the fan on before you start. Oh, not every Oh, this fan time. didn't stand a chance. <laughs> if you had a if you had one of those fucking squirrel fans they use in woodworking to like to like vacuum the shop out, it wouldn't have been good enough. Yeah. It's like taking <laughs> a this super soaker to a forest. Fire you gotta turn the fan on right away. Create a low pressure vacuum inside the bathroom so that there is air just constantly pulling. Because at first, it's just creating the vacuum. It's just having an impact on the air next to the fan. You give it a little time, you get a nice flow coming from under the door out the room. It depends on the. How old are you guys? Uh, 29. 42. 24. How old are you? 25. 25. See, most, most of you guys got a lot more pooping experience. I'm learning a lot listening to you guys. <laughs> well, you eat, you eat too, way too healthy. You know, you gotta eat. Yeah. 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 We eat. Just, just yeah, on camera. Your, I really don't. You don't want don't. your poop coming out in one big piece. That's like being raped from the inside. I don't want any part of that. <laughs> Jesus it should, Christ. It should be watery. It should, it should happen within... Five, if, if, if five seconds later I'm still pooping, there's something wrong. Like, like what happened? PKA medical advice, gentlemen. Yeah, <laughs> you, you want your poop to be watery and 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 to be explosive. Prefer <laughs> if well, you can. Have... Oh no! Did we lose Shane? Uh oh. Probably. I actually have a similar story to oh. Taylor's too, except. No comment. Yeah, we got Hello. you. Your video's frozen, but you, we hear you fine. Yeah, yeah. There it is. Okay. No, I, I had a very similar story to Taylor's, except the the poop did go down. It did flush. However, when I was, I, I was sick at the time, right? <laughs> I was sick at the time, so I was throwing up while shitting. And you know, like when you have diarrhea, it's like it's like wet and farts and really loud. And it was an ex-girlfriend's house, and it was the same setup. Like the kitchen was right next to the bathroom, right next to the living room. Uh. But the door was one of those like closet doors with slits in it, like angled slits. Ooh. Have you ever? It's a ever terrible seen that decision. Window? I know, I know. <laughs> and I remember thinking that too. I'm like, this oh, that's, only that's girls fun. do that. <laughs> Only girls do that because they don't take explosive, horrible shit. So they can't even relate. They have no idea that, what it's like. Seeing that for the first time, I was like, this is going to haunt me someday. I can feel <laughs> it. And sure enough, it did. But uh, I walked out. Like, she was cool about it. I was like, did you, did you uh, hear any of that? And she's like, what do you mean? But I, I know she, there was no way. You asked, yeah. you ran some damage neighbor, control. They <laughs> were down the street with that shit. Uh, dude, I, I, I had that. I was sick this summer. I forget when it was, but I was sick this summer. And I hadn't been sick in a long time. Like, I, I, you know, there's sick where you like have the sniffles or maybe just don't feel 100%. But I can't remember like laying on the tile floor of my bathroom just thanking god that it is so cool you know that, like <laughs> that, that's how sick i was like oh my cheek feels so nice on the tile floor and uh at one point like you mentioned i was pooping and throwing up at the same time and i had a decision to make like one of them wasn't going in the toilet i'm it's fucked bucket, at this man. point uh i did not have a bucket available but right into the bath just <laughs> That's that. Yeah, that I had. I was like, I, I thought I was brilliant, but apparently I'm commonplace. I, I vomited, thankfully not really chunky, into the bathtub while pooping into the toilet, and then I just ran the shower, flushed the toilet, and all was good. Or See, what I do is just get in the just... bathtub and let it all out. <laughs> oh <my God>. <laughs> <laughs> Or maybe if you like lifted the the seat all the way up and mounted it in reverse, you could do both simultaneously. Well, I guess it, like a smaller, like a less endowed man could probably pull that off. <laughs> but for me, I no uh, it's like right a pair of head. coconuts with a with a pool noodle, and there's just really yeah. no throwing up in front of that. No, and that also like. It, it, that's something that in your head at the time you're like, oh, look at this brilliant Nobel Prize winning idea I have. I can, nobody else has thought of this. And then you do it and try it and you just, just all over yourself. And then you're sitting there in acidic vomit sick while shitting. It's just awful. <laughs>